Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. So the title of my sermon is Magic in the Bible. Magic in the Bible. So if you look at Exodus 7, I'm going to go through a bunch of stories about magic in the Bible. I'll show you what it's capable of, show you its limitations, show you what people use it for, show you how people get power to do magic, and we'll just go through the Bible like that. You see a lot of magicians today, and oftentimes a lot of magicians, they just kind of, not that we watch magicians anymore, but you know, from what I knew before I was saved, they just kind of have like tricks, right? You know, they do things and it kind of just seems like it's happening, but it's really not happening. And, and they kind of just, they fool people essentially, but their tricks are easy to figure out, right? It's, it's, oh, they did this by doing this. They have like a secret trap door or, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is. They have another double that ends up up top. But some magic that can't be explained is real. And there, obviously not every magician in the world has gotten to this level, but most people just, you know, like I said, the, the regular magicians, they kind of just, you know, try to fool people with, with their work. However, there are magicians that we can see from the Bible, and I'm sure it hasn't ended because nothing from the beginning to the end is, has ended. You know, there's still people who are doing magic, just as it was in, in Moses' day, and there's still people worshiping God, just as it was in Moses' day. So, I'm gonna show you what real magic, you know, I'm talking about Satan, Satan's hand type of magic, you know, magic that comes from devils or spirits and that type of thing. And we'll look at some stories in the Bible of people who were capable of doing things that would astonish others, but how they got those powers, what are their limitations, what is God capable of, you know, what, what does God do? So if you look at Exodus 7, it says in verse 10, and Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. So these stories are coming from the plagues that God puts upon Egypt. So at a certain time in history, God said that he was going to plague Egypt and harden Pharaoh's heart so that he could show his mighty wonders through Moses and Aaron. And what he was going to do show his power through Moses and, and Aaron so that all the world would know that he was the God of, of the earth. And so what he does is he gives Moses and Aaron some commandments and he essentially tells them, you go do this before Pharaoh and this is what's gonna happen. And he explains it all to them. So every time they show up before Pharaoh, they know what's gonna happen, they know what they're gonna do. What God shows through Moses and Aaron is the fact that he has great, great power. But what we also see is the capability of magicians. So let's look at Exodus 7, verse 10. It says, And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. So one of the things that God does to prove to Pharaoh that he's God is that he casts down, uh, he, Moses tells Aaron, so the way it worked is God would give um, a commandment unto Moses, and Moses would be, what God said is, you're going to be like a God unto Moses in the sense that you're like my direct voice. You're going to tell Aaron to do something and he's going to do it. It's as if Aaron is your prophet. So Moses would get the commandment from God. They'd go in unto Pharaoh. He'd tell Aaron what to do and Aaron would do it in front of him as if, you know, like Moses isn't doing anything, but he's kind of like, saying, Aaron, do this. And it, and it looks like, you know, it's all coming from Moses because God wants everybody to know that Moses is his, his face on earth. You know, essentially, he's telling Moses, he's guiding Moses. Moses is who you go to when you need to speak to the Lord. So Aaron casts down his rod and it becomes a serpent. It becomes a snake. 
And Pharaoh doesn't really get phased by this. You know, if today, if we saw somebody take a rod and throw it down in front of us and it changed into a snake, we would be, you know, astonished. But why is, why is um, Pharaoh not astonished by this? Well, if you keep reading verse 11, it says, Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. So notice the magicians of Egypt had the same power that Moses had to do, right? They, but they used enchantments, right? How are they getting this power? How are they getting this, these enchantments? Well, they have to do certain things for the devils, and the devils give them that power because spirits have power. They have power to do things, and the devil has power to do things. So, so that's why Pharaoh is not faced. If you notice, Aaron and Moses cast down the rod and it becomes a snake, and Pharaoh goes, come here, magicians, and they do it. But if you notice at the end of verse uh, 12, it says, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. So what that shows is, yes, the magicians had the same capability as Aaron. You know, they, both, they also could make the rod a serpent, but a a Aaron's rod was the strongest serpent, right? His, his sn snake swallowed up all the snakes. It's kind of like God showing, you know, yes, you have a similar power in this instance, but my power is still greater, and he swallows up all the rods. But this is a this is God. What he does with the plagues is he increases in difficulty. Like the first the first wonder he shows um, Pharaoh, it's something simple. But to us, obviously, who have never seen anything like that, that would be that would be incredible. But Pharaoh has magicians who worship the devil, and they have special powers, so he's not phased by this. Let's see what God says about magicians and en enchantments. We'll go to Leviticus 19, because, you know, to some people, not I'm not saying anyone here, I'm saying to some people that kind of power may seem enticing. You know, God doesn't give that power to anybody, and he doesn't give it often. Obviously, this was a one-time deal. God was trying to show his power through Moses and nobody else in Israel had this power. It's not like all Christians can just do whatever they want. God told Moses he was going to show his power this one time so that the whole earth would believe. And they had to tell that. He also told Moses to tell that story to every generation forward because he's not going to do it again. So, but it may seem enticing to people who want like power now. You know, they want to do tricks. They want to do this. You know, they want to... Um, deceived with enchantments and those types of things. Well, if you look at Leviticus 19, it says in verse 31, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. That's why Christians should never go to like a magic show. That's why Christians should never go to psychics, right? Yeah, psychics. So the, those psychics and fortune tellers, those types of people. God doesn't want his people to go to them because they have familiar spirits. They, are, they have devils. Blames the way, and sometimes, you know, they'll tell you something and it ends up right. And people will ask, well, they'll ask me, you know, how did that person know that this was gonna happen? Well, the reason I'm doing the sermon is so you can understand that. They have a devil and devils have power. Devil, ha and their power, we'll, we'll get to this. It's limited, but it's, to cast a rod down and make it a snake, it's not, it's not nothing. You know, it's, it's, not any, it's not nothing. So being able to tell a few days in the future what's gonna happen, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, maybe they know the future. Maybe they do. I'm not saying they don't. They could be 5,000 times smarter than we are, you know, and be able to predict things that we could never even think of. So it looks like they're future tellers, right? And I'm talking about devils here. You know, obviously Satan, if he, if God said he was the, I've done this in my documentary and I, I've explained this before. God said he was like the smartest, best music, be, and best musician. If Satan is like a, under God in, in smartness, and I'm not saying he even comes like if God would be all the way up in the sky and Satan would be on the ground, but everybody else is under Satan. So if Satan's on the ground, we're, we're all the way down in the dirt. You know, we, no one has any knowledge even comparable to Satan, even though God's knowledge outdoes every, all them, every, everyone else. So, so Satan's capabilities are, are massive. They're more than anybody else ever. No, no spirit, no, no person, anything. So he, his, his ability 
is, is great, but nothing compared to the Lord. So if you go to uh, Leviticus 20, verse 6, it says, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a whoring after them, I will set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. So this means two things. One, if you seek after like a wizard or a familiar spirit to get answers, or to become, to get yourself a familiar spirit so that you have this power, even though it's not yours, it's the devil giving it to you. God is then against you. You become God's enemy. So as a Christian, you should never go to somebody who has a familiar spirit. That's a psychic, that's a magician, that's any of those people that are getting their power from something else. Because then you're, you're going against the Lord. Exodus 7 verse 20. It says, And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, and in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river turned to blood. So God's next plague is that he tells Moses to smite the water so that all the water in Egypt becomes blood. It goes from water to blood. And it's a mighty miracle, right? The whole, all of Egypt becomes blood, all the water. But Pharaoh still isn't impressed because if you look in the next verse, it says in verse 21, and the fish that was in the river died and the river stank and the Egyptians could not drink up the water of the river and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. So notice, because Pharaoh can see his magicians doing these things and because the Lord's hardening his heart, the way that the Lord's hardening his heart is by letting the magicians do, as, and as he does with everything else. God allows things to happen sometimes so that people seal their own fate. But Pharaoh's not impressed because the magicians can do that. They, they see water and they turn it to blood. They have that power also. And I'm not saying every magician in the world can do this. I'm saying these magicians, which had heavily worship the devil and asked for power and received in power and did enchantments the way that they did those enchantments it's not specifically laid out in the bible but i'm sure they had and i will go over some things that are laid out in the bible but i'm sure they had to do something to get that power they're not just like oh can i have that power and satan's just like yeah no satan is gonna ask something of them they're gonna have to do something i'll show you what it is but the purpose of this is to deceive others. If you remember in Matthew 24, when we went over Revelation, Jesus says that there will be false Christ and false prophets that will show many signs and wonders that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. How do they do signs and wonders? Through this type of power. You know, this would deceive somebody, right? Let's say you have somebody who's fresh, doesn't believe in any God, but wants to, and you go out to them and say, you know, I know the true God, and you, th you throw a rod down and it becomes a snake. A magician could easily deceive somebody, no problem. And that's what they're gonna do in the end times. They're gonna do even greater miracles than this. And it's going to deceive people into thinking that they have the right religion because they get power. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration. Let's go to Exodus 8. It says in verse 5, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams and over the rivers and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up out of the land of Egypt. So this next plague that we're looking at is Aaron stretches forth his rod and frogs start coming up out of all the rivers and, and lakes and everything. So imagine any body of water you see, there's just like millions of frogs just walking out of it. And obviously it's very grievous to the land of Egypt and they're all sad and they're all upset about it. And obviously God's miracle, like the magicians of Egypt couldn't make the whole land of Egypt turn to frogs, like be covered in frogs. Only God could do that. But they still, if you look, verse six, and Aaron stretched out for this hand and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So look, they're still capable of doing that. They're bringing up frogs as well. So Pharaoh's not even phased by this yet. And obviously, like I said, God's miracles god's plague was better it, it was it was greater but the magicians still had the same capability 
If you look at um, 2 Kings 21, I'll show you what are some of the things that they have to do to receive this capability. And he made his son pass through the fire and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards, and he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. So one of the things that the devil requires, or certain devils require, is that you sacrifice your own kids in the fire. So they're not getting these powers for nothing. They're doing it, and they're getting it by doing these wicked acts. You know, much wickedness. I'm sure they, that wasn't the least of their, that was just one of the things that they had to do. To receive this power and enchantments so it's not like a, it's it's not a small price to pay to receive this power on earth but like i said that's just on earth then when you get to the end times god's going to judge you for it and you're going to go to the lake of fire on um, that's worse than all of it worse than anything so that that's one of the prices is is you know what you have to do just for these devils let alone the price that God makes you pay. If you look at Isaiah 19, it says in verse 2, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they that seek to idols, and to charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. So not only do they get that punishment, from you know whatever they have to sacrifice to the devil they also get punished by God you know lands that fully worship evil God punishes them and like he said all the Egyptians were gonna be under the hand of a cruel ruler that God was gonna set up and he was gonna make them you know imagine having the worst king in the world and kings had way more power than presidents have now they could make anybody do anything by force so that's God's punishment. So obviously the price is not worth it, is what I'm trying to explain here. They have a, a very high price to pay for this little miracle, this little power. But let's go to Exodus chapter 8. What I was saying earlier, there is limits to their capabilities. Obviously they don't have unlimited power. They can't do everything because only God can do everything. So I went over some things that they can do and those are wonders, right? Those are miracles. If you saw somebody just make a frog leap out of the water, you know, hundreds of them, or saw somebody turn water to blood, or saw somebody turn a rod into a snake, that would be a wonder. You would wonder at that in amazement. But we we get to a point where God, like I said, God was just slowly amping up things. And, and the, the reason he did it like that is because he, he doesn't want to just come in with the, with the end punch, right? He's like, he's like jabbing them and jabbing them and jabbing them. And then he gets to a point where he's like, okay, you're, I'm trying to show you that I'm God. You know, I'm trying to prove to you that I'm the Lord. And then, and he doesn't want to hurt them too bad at first, right? He's, he's like, you know, I'm just going to warm up with this. And he knows he's gonna to have to do all the plagues. He, he even tells Moses before it happens. He says he's not gonna let you go until you do the last one. But he's just warming them up. And by the time they get like midway through, some of the Egyptians even believe it's uh, that, you know, they're, they're astonished. So this is where, this is the point we get to where in Exodus 8, verse 17. And they did so, and Aaron stretched forth his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast, and all the dust of the land became lice throughout the land of Egypt. So Aaron takes his rod and he smites it on the floor, and all the dust of the land, you know, Egypt has a lot of dust. It's not, you know, think of all the roads, all the, just all the land in general, becomes lice immediately. So all, think of, you know, when you're just walking on the dirt, imagine all that dirt turned to lice immediately. Everything would be covered. And that's a, that's a mighty, mighty miracle, right? That's something that is be incredible. If you're walking out and then you just see all the sand and dirt just immediately turn to lice, like, and, and it just starts crawling on you. As it says, it's on man, it's on beast, it's on everything. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there was lice upon man and upon beasts. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them. 
So notice, even the magicians realize at this point that these people aren't just playing tricks like we, we do. They're not worshiping some random devil. They're worshiping the God of the earth. The magicians realize that they've been outdone. You know, they are sacrificing their whole life and family and kids to these devils, and they've only been given so much power. They realize that, oh, this is the real God. You know, this is the capability of God. And that's just like, that's like plague number four or five. You know, he, there's so much more to come. You know, there's locusts to come. God kills all the firstborn of Egypt. It's just like, it's, it, it gets bigger and bigger to the point where all of Egypt wants, wants Israel to leave. And this sermon should just give you some knowledge and understanding on like, there's people, and especially even people who claim to be Christian, you know, right? They, people who claim to be Christian, who could have sold their selves, their so souls, their kids, whatever, for that kind of power into deceiving people to believe whatever they believe, right? That's an explanation for you, you know? That's, an, that's so you have understanding, like, it, can a person really be capable of this? Yeah. People who have done wickedly and, and given themselves to familiar spirits have capabilities. But, as I read this verse, we should have comfort in the fact, 1 John 4, 4, it says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So yes, the, he that is in the world, the devil, has plenty of power, and he can do wonders, in the, but God can do so much more. God has so much more power than the than the magicians. God has so much more power than the devil. It, it, they only got like 20%, 30% through the plagues before the magicians had to tap out. You know, God had so much more to do and he was just doing that because he knew their capabilities. Daniel 1, you'll see another example of this. And it says in verse 17, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azriel. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all manner of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. So you notice, when God gives wisdom, it doesn't matter how much ma of man's wisdom you try and accumulate. Somebody could like study their whole life and sell their soul to the devil and get all the wisdom that they could think that they have. But even in the end, the king of those magicians say that these four people from Israel have 10 times more wisdom than any of you that have been studying this your whole life. Because God gave the wisdom. So magic may seem enticing, you know, power may seem enticing, but the most enticing thing is to be on the side of the one that has the mo all of it. He has all the power to do what the magicians do, and then 50 times more. One more example is in 1 Kings. It says in verse 25, And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and they called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped on the altar which was made, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he's pursuing, or he's on a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they cried aloud, and they cut themselves after the manner with knives and lancets till their blood gushed out upon them. That was like a way that they sacrificed to Baal. You know, they, they cut themselves and bled on the altar. They can't do anything, right? They call upon their God. They, they're asking for fire from heaven and nothing happens. And they're cutting themselves. They're sacrificing. They're doing all these things. Nothing happens. Elijah mocks them and says, where's your God? He may be sleeping. And then in verse 36, it's Elijah's turn. And he says, and it came to pass 
At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, then Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known that this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that the people know that thou art the Lord God. Before we continue, I just want to point out one little thing. So you notice how like Christians today will say that the Lord did this through them and or you know somebody that oh God gave me a vision and this is what notice what he says what Elijah says it says Lord God of Abraham Isaac and Israel let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word so Elijah's not going on his own and and just like saying he's gonna do random miracles that he thought up on himself God told him beforehand, this is what I want you to do, this is what's gonna happen, and this is why you're doing it. People think that, like today, that they're just gonna go and walk and just be like, you know, I'm gonna do this miracle, and cause, cause Elijah did it, he called, he called on God and, and God showed up when he needed him. But he only called on God cause God told him beforehand and came to him first and said, I need you to go do this, and this is what's gonna happen. So. God gives the, the miracle and the, the thing to the person. And Elijah was not a prophet like anybody today, you know. He did things, and I've gone over this in other sermons, that no other pe person in the world would be willing to do, you know, for the Lord. And that's why he is allowed to do this miracle. So let's keep reading. It says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell, and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. So people may call on, you know, these familiar spirits, these gods, but obviously we can see through the Bible that they have no power comparable to what the Lord has. But don't get me wrong, this, the sermon, this point of the sermon was not to show you God's power, it's to show you the capability of people, wizards, you know, of magicians, of, of wickedness, and warn you to stay away from them, because they're dealing with devils. And if you go and deal with them, by association, you're dealing with devils. So last verse I'm gonna go over is in 1 John 4. It says in verse one, Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So well, what John is trying to explain here is that there's gonna be people that can do mighty things, things that would just make you believe, right? And God warns us all the time, don't believe people based on these things that they can do, because I can do more. And the only way to know if a person is, is you know, following the Lord or not, he gives us the answer. It says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come of the, in the flesh is of God. So it doesn't just mean that, you know, if somebody says that uh, Jesus, you know, was a person, that Jesus just lived one time, because there's a lot of Catholics in the world, billions of Catholics, that believe that Jesus existed. And there's billions, you know, millions of Mormons, there's millions of Jehovah Witnesses, and they believe that Jesus existed, and they believe that he walked on earth. But what this verse is saying is, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, so when we hear Jesus Christ, we think of a name, but when the Bible says Jesus Christ, what it's saying is, Jesus, the Son of God. Because Christ means the anointed one, it means master, it means the son of God. It means that God himself. When, when the Bible says Jesus Christ, Christ is not Jesus' last name. It's explaining that Jesus, the name, the person Jesus, was, is God that came down to earth. So anybody that can understand that and believe that is saved, right? We've gone over that a million times. But it's just, it's not the fact that they admit that Jesus is a person. You have to have the, not, the understanding, the belief that God himself, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, you know, the Son of God, um, God himself came down to earth in the flesh to die for your sins because if you believe that then you're saved and that's how they tell us to judge people you know can you tell if somebody is you know truly saved or not you got to check their salvation and that's the way you do it 
So I hope that sermon helped you to understand, you know, the capability and the wickedness of magicians and magic, and obviously also God's great power and how much better off we are having the Spirit of God within us. And just because God doesn't like show miracles through us every second, he did the same in Israel. There, there's, there was hundreds and hundreds of years where no miracle was done. And that's because God expects the people to read the Bible and see what he's done in the past. He's not going to do it every day because that doesn't bring faith. Faith is people who have not seen and yet believe.